Hello and welcome to a quick tutorial on streak line, streamline, and particle paths using TechPlot 360. I'm using TechPlot 360 2014 R2. Let's first go ahead and load a solution. The solution we're going to load is a unsteady solution of vortex shedding. Um, we'll look at first few time steps and uh, since this m is in a solution that uh, has a mesh that doesn't change uh, we'll just pull down grab the mesh as well add it to the list and maybe we'll just take the last couple of time steps it doesn't really matter we'll add these to the list and we'll go ahead and open them now I'll, I want to point out quickly that you can see the progress bar it's reading through the additional solution times You'll notice that it's, it says here that it's setting up zones. It's not loading any data. We're merely going through, we're looking at all the time steps. What we're trying to figure out is, okay, is the mesh moving, which in this case we only have one mesh, but if it were, it would start to assign zones. It's looking for time step information that it will use to assign a time strand, which is important for when we actually do the streak line calculation. Uh, but in this case, it, it is not uh, repeat, not loading the data, which is good because uh, we're talking about, I think all told, the solution is close to about 7 or 8 gigabytes and it just would take a long time to load. Okay, so once it's done you'll see it will open up. Basically what you're seeing is the extent of the domain in the volume for each of the blocks in the solution. I'll go to Zone Styles, Dialog, and I'll just select one. I hit Control A, which basically selects all the zones. The surfaces that we're going to plot are the J surfaces I believe so if you right click here go to the J planes you'll see that it will identify uh, the cylinder these uh, particular J planes aren't necessary for the solution and um, we're gonna go ahead and see if we can't select these guys and uh, we'll go ahead and hide them and really you have a number of things you can do hide basically says okay I don't, I don't want to see that in my domain so, for example, uh, let's select these guys, and uh, same thing, I'll hide them. Or you can do them individual, it really doesn't matter. It's pretty straightforward. And all hide basically is telling TechPlot is, hey, I, I don't really need you to plot anything, so um, please turn off the surfaces. So we're back to just our cylinder. In general, you can show the extent of the domain. I'm going to turn that off, it's not as important and uh, you can see it's a simple cylinder let's drop in a slice um, the slice is going the x direction if I want to change it to the y direction I can just type y and that's actually perfect because what we want to do is look at streamlines and streak lines on either side of the cylinder to turn on stream traces we'll select stream traces go to the stream trace tool at this point I'm just going to create a rake um, I'm not going to put in individual positions. I'm going to get two rakes, a rake on the uh, upwind side and a rake on the downwind side. And I'll show you why that's important here in a second. You can see these are 3D and if I animate you'll see that these are instantaneous stream traces. Effectively every time we go from time step to time step it's going to recalculate or reintegrate through the vector field based on the seed position uh, for each of the lines. Okay. So this is, uh, for a steady state solution in particular, stream traces are, are basically fine. Um, but we're quite interested in looking at streak line analysis and particles with mass. So let's go ahead and press pause. There's a lot of solution time steps I've brought in. We don't need to see them all. Um, so we're going to move first uh, into the analyze capabilities and we're going to go to particle paths and streak lines. So there are two types of calculations one can do, a particle path or a streak line. Particle paths will follow effectively the uh, streamline or the original streamline from T0. Uh, the thing that would make them interesting is that you can use mass, so we can use a ballistic coefficient, we can use ablation, and the idea here is that in principle uh, you can start those particles with zero velocity or specify velocity. 
uh, you can start them with gravity in the minus x, y, or z, plus x, y, or z position. Well, so that's one type of calculation. Um, it also has an integration time step. Uh, this is related to when you're doing streak line calculations, which we'll do. Now, a couple things on streak lines. You can release more than one park roll each time step. So a streak line calculation is different than the streamline integration in that effectively it's going to release those particles in time and the next when it goes to the next time step it will release particles based on where those particles have migrated in the vector field uh, from the first time step and I'll show you what that looks like here in a second. Um, we'll release say two particles per time step uh, we're going to do this per solution time we'll leave the default on the integration time step and we'll hit calculate okay so it looks like uh, that finished now depending on the size of your solution the number of time steps the calculation for uh, particle pass and streak lines can can take a while I mean it is actually um, takes a fair amount of computational resources um, once it's done you'll get uh, something that will say that the velocity have been stored in the current vector variables and uh, it will say it was successful. Um, we're going to turn on the scatter symbol. And the uh, scatter symbols that are being shown right now, if we go to zone style, you'll see that uh, we have a series of streamlines. And we'll go to scatter and we'll just confirm that in fact uh, for the majority of the zones here, we don't want to show scatter. Okay, Oops. streak lines we do, by the way. So there we go. So we'll start here, go down to the bottom. There are 20 of them, and we'll select them. Um, outline color, I'm going to change that to just be uh, row. And in terms of scatter size, I'll make it a little smaller. I'll close this. Now we're at the, uh, the end time step here. We're going to actually go back to the beginning and if I animate these stream traces or animate these streak lines you can see now there are the particle paths or the streak lines in this case so they're evolving in time and they're going to go through and as we go through the solution uh, they'll actually develop so this is a, a simple way to look at those streamlines now the the dialog doesn't uh, dismiss so I'm going to interrupt here. I'll just move it off the screen for the animation effect and uh, you'll notice that if I hit play that the streak lines themselves aren't really animating. That's because they're stored uh, slightly differently. So, not a big deal. I just uh, wanted you to be aware that uh, you have to animate these streak lines from the dialog. We'll press pause here. So let's uh, animate this as well. So you can see those streak lines developing and so it's a relatively easy operation uh, to generate streak lines in this case you'll see that we are actually obscured a little bit because of the slice I'm going to uh, turn the slice off so I will stop this for a moment if you want to turn off the slice you can actually just double click on the slice here Oop, that's a stream trace and um, you can turn it off or uh, just undo slices undo the stream traces let's rotate this around a tad uh, we'll see the scatter here is actually shown for the uh, for the zones here we're going to perhaps uh, turn on translucency so you can see it a little better and uh, now we'll, we'll go ahead and animate again on screen and so you can see uh, where those streak lines are going as they develop in time so it's a pretty nice way to look at uh, turbulent flows. And you'll see that it continues to release two streams per time step. Uh, it looks like the streamlines or streak lines on the upwind side seem to be kind of slowly approaching the cylinder. And that's uh, how you do the calculation. Again, you can also use mass. So if you want to use mass, you can use um, ballistic coefficients as well. So there's lots of uh, different options. You can change the integration time step. You don't have to release it just with the solution time level. You can make it arbitrary. And that's how you do uh, streak line animation. So 
In the next tutorial, we'll be talking about gradients and shadow graph calculations. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next tutorial.